Lesson 5.6, Properties of Linear Relations. Uh, in this lesson, of course, we're going to be looking specifically at what happens when you have a linear graph. All right, so uh, all the examples will revolve around that. Let's get started here. The cost for a car rental is $60, plus $20 for every 100 kilometers driven. So the independent variable then must be the distance driven. And the dependent variable then is the cost, right? So how much you pay depends on how far you drive. So we can identify this as a linear relation in a number of different ways. And so the first way that we're going to take a look here is by using a table of values. And so how you can do this is simply by looking at how much they go up by, okay, in terms of the distance and the cost. So in this table, do you notice that on the uh, left-hand side here, every time it's going up by 100. If this is going up by 100 every time, and we see that it's also going up by a similar amount on the other side, then we know that it must be linear. So I see on this other side that every single time it's going up by 20, then that makes it have to be a linear relation. All right. If, for instance, I saw that on this side it was going up even by 20 on this one, and then 30 on the next one, and so on, then um, that would not be linear. Okay, It could be some different type uh, that we might look at in the years to come. So. So what we know is that when you have a linear relation and there's a constant change in the independent variable, your x variable, um, that's going to also result in a constant change in the dependent variable. So that's what we just saw with that uh, example. All right. Let's take a look at this set of ordered pairs. Now this is the same ordered pairs that we dealt with in the graph. Well, how do you know that this is a, um, a linear relation? Again, if you look at the x values, 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, notice how they're all going up by 100 every time. And then if we look at the, uh, the y values, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, notice that they're all going up by 20 each time. Uh, when you have a graph, it's uh, very easy to figure out if something is uh, linear or not because it just makes a line like so. Okay, So if you ever see a line uh, like that, you can assume it's a linear relation. They show you here that the change um, in the dependent variable is going up by 20, and of course the change in the independent is going up by 100. Now in some of the questions that you come across, they're going to want you to calculate the rate of change. All right? So try and figure out uh, how much it's going up. Uh, so for instance, in this example, what we would say is we could uh, figure out the rate of change. And so it's always the change in the dependent variable. So in this case, the cost over the change in the independent variable. And in this case, distance. So if you just take any two points, remember how we saw that each time it was going up by $20. All right? And for it to go up uh, $20, you had to have driven uh, 100 kilometers. Then we can reduce this and just say that over the course of one kilometer, it costs basically $0.20. Cents, all right? So they're going to pay $0.20 cents a kilometer. So the rate of change is $0.20. Cents per kilometer. That is for each additional one kilometer driven, the rental car or sorry, the rental cost increases by twenty cents. Right. The rate of change we would say is constant always for a linear relation. Alright. We can also write this as an equation. So we can determine the rate of change from the equation that represents the linear function. Let the cost be C dollars and the distance driven be, as I should say, B D kilometers. An equation for this linear function is, well, we have cost, okay? We know it costs 20 cents a kilometer, so we have 0.2 D, all right? And we also had that initial amount. Remember, it just said, as soon as you rent this car, it doesn't matter how far you're going to drive, it's going to cost you $60. So if we want, we could write this even in function notation if we want. We could say this is C of D. We have a function of cost um, that uh, is determined by D. Okay, now that we have everything here, let's label each one of these things. So 60 represents your initial cost.
cost. So remember, it didn't matter how far you drove, no matter what, they were going to charge you $60 for the rental car. The 0.2 or 0 0.20 here is the rate of change. That's how much they're going to cost you every kilometer that you drive. And D is our independent variable. And C of D, or just C, is your dependent variable. Okay. So let's take a look at a couple specific examples, identifying if they are linear or not. And go from there. Example, which relation is linear? Justify the answer. So let's start with here with A. A new car is purchased for $24,000. Each year, the value of the car decreases by 15%. The value is related to time. So each year the value decreases by 15%. That means the value of the car is going to be 100%, that's what it originally was, minus 15%. So each year the car is going to be worth 85% of what it was worth from the year before. So that means at year zero when you go and buy this car, it's $24,000. Okay. So these are all going up by one. Right, so that's looking linear on this side, but just because it's linear on this side and they're all going up nicely by a uniform amount doesn't mean it's going to be on the other side. So if you take your calculator now and you take $24,000 and you multiply it by 0.85, putting it to um, uh, 85%, you get, I believe, approximately $3,600. All right, so that tells you that in year one, the car will have lost $3,600. Okay, so now it's roughly at $20,400 is the worth or the value of the car. Now you have to take this new amount and multiply it by 0.85. And you'll see that the car this time lost $3,060. So it's now worth 17340 And the last one, when you take that amount and multiply it by 0.85, you get that it's lost roughly $2,601. So now we're at $14,739. And you'll notice here that since these are not um, a uniform amount, all right, we're not losing the same amount of value, we would say that this is not For example, B says, for a service call, an electrician charges a $75 flat rate plus $50 for each hour he works. Right? The total cost for service is related to time. So after the first hour, the cost increases by $50 an hour. So let's fill this in. Notice how on this side they're going up by plus one every time. The initial cost is $75. Every time an hour elapses, he's going to charge $25, or sorry, $50 more, so we're at $125. 175, 225, and then 275. And so since that we add 50 every single time going from here down, we would say that this is an example of something that is constant. Okay. Now in terms of graphs, um, what are the different types of linear relations we can have and non-linear relations we can have? That's where we're going to take a look at right here. So for instance, we could have a linear relation like so. If you had, uh, let's say, x plus y equals 8. On a graph, and we're going to explore this more in the next unit, this graph's going to look roughly like so. Okay, So it makes a nice straight line. You can also have the graph of, let's say, x equals 1. I should probably do my axes maybe a little bit different here so we can see the difference. So if you have the graph of x equals 1, it's actually going to make a vertical line. That's also considered a linear relation. Now, you might uh, remember, though, that would be an example of something that is not a function. Okay, So it's still a linear relation because it's a straight line, but it's not a function because it would fail the vertical line test. You can have another linear relation, y equals 5, means you're going to have a horizontal line that crosses at 5. And then we'll even look at um, some that are written in an equation we'll look at next unit called y equals mx plus b, where we have a graph, let's say, that looks approximately like so. We can also have examples of nonlinear relations. And this is not going to be too important. I'm giving you more. This is just kind of a fun fact. In the years to come, we're looking at, going to look at graphs like this, y equals x squared. So if you ever want to borrow my graph and calculate and probably play around with this, you can. You'll notice that for y equals x squared, you get something that's called a parabola. And it makes a graph that looks kind of like a smiley face like that. You can have the graph of y equals x cubed. That's going to give you a graph that makes a what we call a cubic function. It looks kind of like that. We'll even, uh, in grade 12, you may even look at a function like so that makes a lovely circle. And uh, in grade 11, we'll be looking at this graph called a radical graph. 
which is kind of like half a problem a sideways there. Okay. So in any event, one of the things that you are going to know or need to know how to do is how to identify um, if a relation is linear. So we know a relation is linear simply by the exponents. Okay. So the exponent for x and y must be 1 to be a linear relation. If it's not, if it's 0.5, if it's 2, if it's 3, whatever, then that fails and it would not be a, uh, a linear relation. Okay, let's go to the back page. All right, the back page, example 2. A water tank on a farm near Swift Current, Saskatchewan holds uh, 6,000 liters. Graph A represents the tank being filled at a constant uh, rate. Graph B represents the tank being emptied at a constant rate. Identify the independent and dependent variables, uh, and then they want you to go and determine the rate of change of each relation. So two things that they want you to do here, I'm just going to shrink this up so we can see it a little bit better, the graphs going on here. So the independent and dependent, remember that your independent variable is always what is on the x-axis, so that would be your time. And the time would be represented by t. And we have on the y-axis volume. And that is represented in terms of v on the graph. Okay. okay, b says, determine the rate of change of each relation. Then describe what it represents. So how we can do this is you just need to go and select two ordered pairs. So I'm going to take this ordered pair and this ordered pair. So if we want to first find the change in volume. You notice that between those two ordered pairs, um, the volume was at 4,000, and on this point it was at 3,000, so we would go 4,000 minus 3,000 is equal to 1,000 liters. And now what we need to also go and find is what the change in time is. And the change in time was it was at 80 minutes, and now it was at 60 minutes, so 20 minutes has elapsed. And what you can see is in 20 minutes then, there was uh, 1,000 uh, liters of water uh, put into the tank. And so, to get your rate of change down here, we'll do this in blue, the rate of change is equal to 1,000 liters all divided by 20 minutes. Remember, it's your dependent variable, so that was the 1,000 liters, uh, divided by your independent variable, the time, 20 minutes. And you reduce this down, you end up getting that you have 50 liters per minute. Okay. Let's try it on the next one. Next one, of course, the, uh, the tank is being uh, emptied, so we'll see what happens. Let's take two order pairs again. I will take, uh, I don't know, let's take these two. So we have the change in volume this time, so I'll just use the same title right there. It was originally at, uh, let's see, we had it originally at 4,000. And it's gone to now 2,000. Right on the other side here, we'll notice that we're emptying a water tank. And if you noticed on the example before, I took the coordinate that was on the right and I subtracted from the left. I'm still going to do it the same way. So I have change in volume. And so for this one, I had 2,000 liters and I'm going to subtract it from 4,000. So you're going to see here I'm going to get a negative amount, negative 2,000 liters. All right, the change in time was at 40 minutes, and I'm subtracting the 20 minutes, so that gives me 20 minutes again. And so the rate of change this time you're going to see is going to have to be negative. So the rate of change right here using the same equation will be negative 2,000 liters all divided by 20 minutes. This should make sense that we end up getting a negative amount, right? Because, of course, we are emptying the container. So we found out that over the course of one minute, you're going to lose approximately uh, 100 liters. All right, so that concludes this lesson. Uh, we looked at basically how you can determine if something is a linear relation or not. Um, we also discussed uh, what some graphs will look like for this. And we determined how you can find uh, the constant um, rate of change.